This short video is designed to go over the Implant One Bone Profiler Kit for the Implant One system. What you're looking at here is the original x-ray of the tooth in place, followed by the implant placement and the parallel pin that was used just prior to placing the implant. This system was designed to be placed subcrestal. So to uncover this implant, there are several ways to do it. What you're looking at here is a rotating uh, biopsy punch in the motor-driven handpiece. You could certainly do it with a handheld biopsy punch as well. This is probably the most difficult part of the whole procedure, is just getting that tissue uh, removed from the site. You can certainly do this procedure with a surgical blade if you find that easier, but generally I use a biopsy punch for a single implant case like this. Once the tissue is removed, then the next thing you would determine is whether the implant is exposed or whether the bone in this case has grown over the top of the implant. So you have a subcrestally placed implant with a good healing response and now the uh, implant will have to be exposed in order to take the final impression. I generally use a high-speed handpiece with a lot of irrigation to take off the bone over the top of the implant. And you would generally do this quite carefully. When you see the titanium starting to show through is when you would stop with the handpiece and go then to hand instruments to find the cover screw on top of the implant. If you would happen to nick the implant with, this, with the rotating handpiece, you're not going to damage the implant, but obviously you want to minimize as much of that contact as you can. So you're looking at now the 050 hex tool engaged into the cover screw, and we're just going to turn that counterclockwise until the uh, cover screw comes off. If you don't get all the bone off the top of the cover screw, sometimes it's a little challenging to get that off. Now you're looking at the bone profiler kit. Implant 1 has two different platforms, Series 1 and Series 2. The yellow is Series 2, so we know just from that picture that this is an implant that's 4.0 millimeters or bigger. So the cover screw is removed. The pin is placed into the implant and screwed down, just hand torque, down to the top of the implant. The bone profiler now, as you can see, has three different diameters. In this case, we chose the middle profiler, which will take away more bone than the small one and less than the big one, obviously. So we're just trying to open up the bone and tissue down to the top of the implant so that we can have the entire top of the implant exposed. If you wouldn't remove the bone, it would, you would have potentially difficulty getting the impression post fully seated for the impression. And you can also see in the video here that the top of the implant now, the titanium implant, is exposed. This is, again, your Series 2 impression post. It would either be green or red. All your uh, implant diameters that are three point, or less than 4.0 are green, and the ones that are 4.0 or bigger are yellow. So you want to engage this impression post into the hex of the implant, and then tighten that down again, finger pressure, so that it's fully seated. The black snap cap that's going on here now is just used to keep the impression material out of the screw hole in the impression post. I always at this point take a periapical x-ray and what you're doing that for is to verify that everything is fully seated and it's not interfered with in terms of bone or tissue. Uh, and that x-ray then should be sent with your case to the laboratory so they can, they can determine how far subcrestal the implants placed. You're looking at a standard impression, generally with polyether, polyvinyl impression material would be the material of choice. Certainly you could do a, a digital impression with a different impression post, but now you're in your standard impression protocol. This particular material has a four minute set, so after the four minutes, remove the impression tray. 
because we didn't allow the tissue to heal, we, we took the impression the same day we uncovered the implant, there will be some blood and whatnot in the impression. Remove the impression post, and the next step will be to place a healing cap in that site. We're looking for a healing cap that would come up to about the top of the tissue engaged in the implant. You can see this one is a bit short, so we'll replace it with a healing cap that's slightly taller. Uh, the tissue cuff heights come in different heights depending on the depth of the implant placed. So we'll pick the next size up, the next length, and see if that fits more appropriately. The tissue now will heal around that healing gap, as you can imagine. It won't develop perfect, a perfect tissue profile. It'll be a rounded profile. So again, the process that you saw me do to uncover the implant, you might do again when you place the crown so that it's fully seated. Once the impression is completed, uh, the next step is to take the analog for a Series 2 implant, again, yellow in color attach it to the impression post, and then insert that into the impression. The same 050 hex driver will secure these two pieces together. If you don't have the analog in your office, potentially the laboratory would do this part of the procedure. The less number of times that you insert that impression post into the impression, the better. Taking it in and out several times could potentially distort the impression and make your impression less accurate. And that's pretty much the end of the uncovering and impression protocol. Mm -hmm.